several years ago, I'm up north, I'm with a client, and I'm walking with him on a practice round before a tournament begins. There, on, the, on the PGA Tour practice rounds, a real informal kind of thing. People join up uh, on particular holes, if there's a bottleneck or they'll let them go through, whatever. It's, it's a very informal, everybody sort of knows everybody. So we came up on Hideki Matsui, he had an entourage of people with him and there was two caddies, three media people, uh, one or two equipment people, an exercise person or seemingly like a physical therapist or something like that, and a, a seemingly a businessman. I spoke to the businessman, you know, while we were walking down the fair. We were passing uh, Matsui and going through and I had a chance to talk to the businessman. I couldn't certainly get to Matsui, that's for sure. One caddy was there for his club selection, and another caddy was a four caddy, He'd run way up front, uh, way down the fairway. And then uh, when he got towards the green, the four caddy would roll balls on the front of the green all the way to the back of the green. He would go all around the green, rolling balls off the edges, looking for subtle breaks or just looking for breaks and looking for characteristics on the green. The equipment guys had clubs that were like in the back. The clubs were pointing up that like a backpack and you know different wedges and uh, one guy had just irons, other guy was working with woods but I mean there was uh, they were trying out different clubs for him and they were following him around like I said from shot to shot. Every step he took the media people would be right there taking Cam, you know, had their cameras right in his face, and it, there was a, three of them, three media people, magazines, and they were from Jap they were from Japan, so the Japanese media were fi following him every step he took. Anyway, I could never get close to him. My player never got close to him. Of course, we just went around, and, and then my player looks at me and says, "Why ain't? Why don't I have those people around me?" I, I don't know, you know. And I was thinking in my mind, "Well, you're not Hideki Matsui. That's the first thing we're trying to get there." Of course. But uh, <laughs> that was the difference between my guy and Hideki Matsui. Got a question from a client stating, Dr. Trammell, I do, I'm a golfer and I do very well in practice rounds, but when it comes to tournament play, I'm at least eight to 10 strokes higher. Please help or what are your thoughts? So that's a very common thing among golf and golfers. In fact, it's a common thing among a lot of athletes that do very well in practice but they can't do as well in a tournament situation and just as a generalization i'm not sure about you of course but in a generalization it's due to situational anxiety so in practice there are no consequences you know you uh, hit a bad shot you throw another ball down eh, no big deal just move forward but in tournament play there is no just throw another ball down without penalty strokes so there are consequences so there are no consequences in practice. There are nothing but consequences in a tournament. And therefore, your subconscious mind then in certain situations then engages the fight, flight, or freeze mode. And all of a sudden, what was a very loose and uh, you know easygoing golf swing becomes something of a guide. You're trying to force a ball in there because you're afraid. You're afraid of hitting it out of bounds or in the water or whatever. And that's a great way to shoot eight over par. So a, a solution to that is to make practice as consequential as in a tournament, and that'll train your subconscious mind to continue to work in practice as diligently and as real, keep it real in practice as in a tournament. So let's say you are gonna play a nine hole practice match, and for every shot that you're over par, you owe the cart boy $5. So let's say you come in at three over par, you shoot a little, a, a little smooth 39, you owe the cart boy $15. Now, if you don't think that that will cause your subconscious mind to, to get yourself in gear, think again. The act of losing money is something that you want to avoid. So their subconscious mind will hopefully get you back into focus. You're focused now and there are consequences. You're, you're, this is real here. Because every putt you miss, every shot you miss, there could be a loss of $5 coming out of your pocket. When you have the consequences of losing money in a practice round, then that can cause situational anxiety. After a period of time, you won't, you, you won't have any more anxiety anymore because your subconscious mind is getting used to, used to that environment. So then if you say in your mind, then this is real. 
in practice. So I've got to really focus and concentrate. Either one or two things is gonna happen. Your practice round scores are gonna go up or your tournament scores are gonna go down because now you're getting used to situational anxiety because in practice, it counts. It has now become very, very real for you. So that would be my advice.